Hi guys, my name is Christina and welcome to my channel. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about how much should you charge for your art? So I actually get asked this question a lot, a lot, a lot. A lot of people asking me uh, this question, even people who I would consider successful professionals, but when they, for example, get asked to do some type of art that they usually don't do for money, for example, they're an illustrator and they ask to do some of design things, or if they're already a designer and they ask to illustrate something or, you know, paint some painting on the wall, they get confused. And if those people call my friends, they ask me, I think they do this because I did a lot, a lot of art jobs, a lot, like literally almost any job that is art related that exists i did i did graphic design illustration writing i did work for theater i did performance on the festivals i did motion capture <laughs> i did photography videography i was helping people to promote their social media i did interior design i mean <laughs> if you actually want a video of me actually telling all the art jobs that i ever did and what i think about them let me know because i did quite a lot almost any art job under the sun i probably did oh well and i also work in movies i did vfx i did compositing I did matte painting, I do matte painting, I do concept art, and I did a lot of different movies, including if you have a little kid, you know, show Paw Patrol, I worked on that. So I did a lot, a lot of art jobs. So people, I guess, ask me because I did a lot of different things, and if usually the new thing that I asked to do is something that I did already. And people ask me, how much should I charge? In this video, I'm gonna tell you how to decide how much to charge, basically whatever I'm telling my friends when they have the situation. So there's actually three questions that I think you need to ask yourself to actually pinpoint the number. I'm gonna walk you through those questions and then you will be able to know how much to charge for art yourself or actually for any type of freelance job basically. So first question that you need to ask and it's gonna be very self-explanatory is how much people usually get paid for this type of job? Yes, for this question you will have to go to Google, you will have to Google it, you have to search wedding photographer, how much do they earn? You will usually get a range and you should to understand what this range is. You can go to people who already do this type of job such as for example me and ask how much would you charge for this? Then you can go on Google search there or you can actually find people who do similar type of job and they have similar type of style, skills and equipment as you and you can actually contact them and ask how much they charge as if you are a client and they will give you an estimate. Gathering this estimate range is very important and this will be the base from which we're gonna be working from. It's very important that you get this range down first and then we're gonna be shortening this range. Or you can actually go to the websites that are specifically looking for this type of labor. You can go to freelancer.com, you can go to Kijiji, I I don't know, Craigslist. You can actually look everywhere and see how much people are offering and how much people are asking for, for this type of service. Nail down the range. This is the base. We're going to start from there. Second question you need to ask yourself is what is the minimum pay you would be willing to work for? And I know this question sounds a little cynical and sounds like a little bit, oh wow, that's getting greedy. But it's very important that you know this number because I'm talking from my own mistakes and my own experience, obviously. When I was just starting doing freelance illustration, I did a lot of art freelance already, but I really, really Really wanted to be an illustrator and land some illustrating job. I would agree to do something for less that would be an okay price for me. I would be thinking, well, I'm gonna do it for a very cheap price and then, you know, it's just gonna land the job and then I will have something on my portfolio. Or I'm really desperate for the job, I don't feel like I can get the job for this type of money, so I'm gonna agree for whatever the money and get this job and to do it. But don't do it, think about it, because there is several dangers associated with this. First danger is, if this money is not enough for you to keep your motivated, then you will more certainly get very frustrated in the process of working on this project. There will be a moment when the client will ask you for some notes, will ask you to change something, edit something, and you will get pissed because you don't feel like you're getting enough from this. Motivation of like, I just want a piece in my portfolio is not going to last you a long time. You can literally just draw something, whatever, and put it in your portfolio. You don't need a client and you need to work on something that is less than your ideal work to get something in your portfolios. You will get frustrated and getting frustrated is not good. Because first of all, you can burn yourself out, you can create bad association with, you know, freelance in general and be like, I don't ever want to do freelance anymore, that feels like a slavery. Or you might be so frustrated that you cancel on the project, you're like, you know, f it and not gonna get paid anything, even the small thing that you agreed to, just because you want to get out this much. It's not really worth it. So think about it. When you have a project offered to you, so calculate how much time you think you're gonna spend on this project and be really realistic. Calculate realistic number. And then when you know, okay, this is how much time I need to do it, multiply this time by two or three at least, because if you're working with the client, it's not like working with yourself. You'll do a sketch, for example, illustration work, but it will be back and forth. You will sometimes into the client, the client will say, well, this is the edits you 
will send it again, the client will say again, well, this is the edit. So we'll back and forth, it will prolong the time. And if, for example, the client has a deadline, all of this time you're gonna kind of extract from your day. If you have a day job, it's gonna be taken from your nights, from your weekend, from things that you wanna do otherwise, like watch TV or something. Consider all of this to find out what is the minimum payment that you need in order to get motivated. This is very important that you nail this down. We already defined the range answering our first question. So after you find your minimum, the range gonna be less wide and you will have better understanding now what number you can pick within the new range. So on the third question you need to ask yourself is gonna be even more cynical than the previous one is how much does your client have money-wise? It's very important to understand that not from the standpoint, oh, if they're loaded, they're gonna get all their money. There are different type of clients. There are clients who don't have enough money and when they're asking you to do the job, they usually don't expect certain type of quality or they don't value this type of work this much. For example, imagine somebody on opening a hot dog booth in the downtown center and they thought, oh, maybe I can do a lower for this. They don't think it is very serious and they're asking you to do this and you can estimate, okay, what their business is. They're probably not doing it as an important part of their business. They're probably not doing a big branding. They're very individual client. They're not a company. They don't have quite a lot of financial backing and probably they're not valuing this type of project enough to pay a lot of money. Otherwise, if they won't value it, they probably would already feel that they cannot afford it. I hope I'm making sense here. However, when you're working with a commercial client, such as, let's say, a big company that is doing something, and normally if you're working with some big company, usually you're contacted through the agent. Usually the agent is managing you to get this work done for this company. This company is good used to for everything. It's taking a long time to do everything, get approved on different meetings. They got used to big numbers. They get used to, you know, commissioning from other companies. And when you commission from other companies, they usually charge a lot. Those people, they used to big money. And actually for those people, if you give a lower number, they would be confused and they will expect very bad quality for you if you are saying the lower number. So it's very important to understand in which wealth category your client is to speak their financial language, basically. So now you will have more narrow range of understanding how much you can ask for. Now, when you're contacting your client, I really recommend you still give your client freedom to bargain because it is important to have feedback because we still have range. We don't have a very set number. So you know you don't want to go lower than this. And you also understand that, you know, probably your client will not go bigger than this. You also understand that it's very pretty much within the range, the standard range for this type of job. You can give your client a higher estimate. This is what I like to do when I give the price. A higher estimate, like a little above your higher estimate. Give it to the client, but suggest that you are willing to consider a lower price because, and you can give different reasons. You can say, oh, because the project is so interesting. Oh, I always wanted to try something like this. Or I really like your cause. I really like your company. Something like this, like give your client a reason why you would like to, you know, meet them in the middle type of thing. Just as the waters, basically you're giving your client the opportunity to bargain a little bit and give a lower price and kind of give away how much they actually have in their pocket. If for example, they don't have this amount of money, instead of saying just no to you, they will say, well, I cannot pay this, but I can pay that. So maybe it's still going to be in your range and you will give your client an opportunity to help you pinpoint the number themselves. Give your client this opportunity and usually if you give them a little higher on your estimate, they will probably come back to you and the number that it will give you will land just in the middle of your range. That would be a win for you. Another thing, if the client says no anyway, don't be upset, don't be negative, don't think it's a bad thing because usually if they say no, there are several reasons for that. First of all, they probably found someone else already or they found someone who will do it for cheap or they want it really lower number. So this number was so out there, bargaining will not help because they want something really lower. And you don't want to go this low because we discussed it already. You don't want to go lower certain number. If the client still says no, it's okay. You didn't sell yourself short and you know your value and don't worry, there's so many clients out there. They will come and they will give you a job and don't worry, you're going to land your jobs, you're going to get your money, you're going to get paid, everything's going to be great. But you don't want to be stuck in the project that you hate or that doesn't pay you as much as you deserve. So I hope this video helps you and I hope uh, it's more like a business type of video and I hope it can be valuable. There are some people on this channel who wants to hear me talking about the comic or art advice and some people actually want to talk about money and employment as an artist. So yeah, let me know if this is the video is something that you like or if you have specific question within the topic of earning money with your art that I can talk to you about. Yeah, I hope this video was interesting and I hope you guys having a good day and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you guys for watching.